Hello, we are Geeks Assembled, and today we are discussing a movie from the mid 90s, um, directed by Danny Boyle, um, based on the Evan Welch novel from 1993, um, Train Spotting. Um, you know, with, with Ewan McGregor. Um, oh, what's his what's his what's his name? That, what's that guy's name? What Susan likes? Um, oh, oh, Johnny Lee Miller. That's it. Um, she loves Johnny Lee Miller, especially yeah. when he was in Once Upon a Time TV series. She loved that. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm only kidding. Um, yes, we're talking transporting um, Scottish drug fueled, um, iconic. Uh, what, what you you can call this anything, and it, it, it you can name put a, a, a word to this movie, and it it will just you'll say transporting straight away. Um, so. Who should we go to first for opening thoughts? I won't, I'm not going to go to Ethan. Um, I'm not... <laughs> you should have the one living up in Scotland right now. <laughs> oh, it's in Glasgow. Is it in Glasgow? It's based in Glasgow, is it? No, it's Edinburgh. 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 Yeah. But they did film one scene in Glasgow. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. It wasn't the toilet scene, was it? No, um, it was the scene with... I'll, I'll tell that later, actually. Yeah, um, we'll go to Connor first. Yeah. Um, I think that this this really put British cinema on the map, I think. It's one of the best films of the 90s. Um, yeah, I love this film. Um, Ewan McGregor is um, fantastic in it. Uh, <laughs> I think that was this his breakout or was Shallow Grave his breakout? Shallow Grave was before this. Yeah. W was he famous after Shallow Grave? Well, this was after Shallow Grave. Yeah, but did Shallow Grave make him famous? Because well, he, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a big, big hit. Anyway, um, I, I think that this is, um, this is kind of one of Ewan McGregor's kind of most famous films or in famous roles um yeah i i like the um kind of dirty grimy drug fueled rage of it all uh, robert like, carlyle is begsby just like leads <laughs> <Just like Lee. laughs> <laughs> um robert carlyle is begsby uh, the psychopath fantastic um Kelly MacDonald, who <laughs> is most famous for probably No Country for Old Men, as well as this, also seen most recently in the best TV series on TV, Line of Duty, um, is, is fantastic. This is her first role. And I think that um, alongside McGregor, she's become the most famous of the of them all, um, because she went on to do No Country for Old Men. Um, she was the first animated heroine for Pixar heroine. Um, quite ironic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in Brave, and then um, she did many many seasons of Boardwalk Empire with um, Steve Buscemi and Martin Scorsese. Um, so I think that she, uh, yeah. I think her career has really kind of uh, taken off in in the way that um, Hugh McGregor's did. Um, I I just love love this film. Danny Boyle is one of the best British directors. There's very few that come close to him. We've reviewed a few of his before. Um, I think this this is probably my favourite of his films. Um, I, I just like the uh, the story really because it's just about a group of people um, on drugs, trying to get off drugs, relapsing onto drugs, and just what that that brings. I mean, you McGregor um, 
can't remember his character's name. What's his character's Ren- name? Renton. Renton. Oh, Renton. I, I keep yeah, thinking. Renton. I keep. I keep thinking he's sick boy, but that's Johnny Lee Miller, isn't that's it? Johnny Lee no, he's yeah. rent um, boy. He's rent boy. Yeah, yeah rent boy. Um, yeah, Renton. I, I like how he he kind of dabbles in heroin, then realizes in the club that um, it, it's improved his sex drive. So then he he ends up shagging Diane, um, who he finds out is underage, and then <laughs> kind of all it all blows up from there where she kind of threatens him to keep the relationship alive. Um, I I think that it's got some really iconic scenes and a really iconic soundtrack. Um, Underworld by uh, Born Slippy is an amazing, amazing song. And this film just made that famous. Or Born Slippy by Underworld. Or Born Slippy by Underworld, yes. It, whichever way you, you, uh, you put on your <laughs> iTunes. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that it's just a proper 90s, gritty British um, film. I think um, Danny Boyle and Guy Ritchie were really leading um, the British scene at the time. And it just, it really kind of highlights what's great about British cinema. Because I think Hollywood. If this was made to a Hollywood standard, it would be all kind of glitzy and kind of fairy tale, but it's really, it's really not. It's really grimy, really dirty. Um, the the toilet scene um, that Lee mentioned <laughs> before the cast, <laughs> um, but the the nightmare inducing baby scene has got to be. The, the absolute standout moment where uh, Renton is having an absolute nightmare and um, the baby starts crawling across the, the ceiling and turns its head like an owl. Creepy. Creepy as hell. Um, it's, got a, it's got a good cast, actually, aside from the, the main, uh, you know, Johnny Lee Miller, Robert Carlyle, Kelly MacDonald and Hugh McGregor. I mean, James Cosmos is in it. Um, I mean, Dale Winton even makes an appearance. <laughs> I, I totally forgot he was in this until I rewatched. <laughs> what the hell is? Um, who else is in it? There's a lot of famous faces. Um, Keith Allen. Keith Allen is yeah, in it. Keith Allen, as the yeah. dealer. Um, yeah, fantastic. And Keith, and Keith Allen's brother as well. Kevin, Kevin Allen. Kevin Allen yeah. yeah, Kevin Allen. Um, yeah, I, I love just how it, it's. Um, it's just about. A group of people just high on drugs, twenty four seven, and just what that brings. Really, it's a drug fueled mayhem. I think that's how you uh, you would describe it. Yeah, in my opinion, thoughts. It's a fantastic film. Thank you, Connor. Um, go on then, Susan. All right. I'll just go get the mop and bucket because we know we're going to get Robert Carlyle all over the floor. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh... It's always good to see Robert Carlyle in literally anything that he ever does. He's the most brilliant and the handsomest. And, you know, he's just, he has something amazing. And in this, uh, Begbie is brutal. But some of his best acting is done with his brutal characters. I mean, yeah, it's just his, his style and his grace and his ability to take a punch and give a punch is just amazing. There the Lee goes off to get the bucket. Anyway, um, <laughs> I really, I, I love, I love train spotting. This movie was, um, I've literally worn this tape out. I, I, I watched it the, la- the last time last night on this video cassette is uh has probably finally taken the last trip in my video cassette player sad but i've had it for a really long time and i got it really cheap i got it for a dollar i mean 
10 feet, that was a stick. Anyway, yeah, I've probably played it 150, 250 times. I love this movie. It's uh, the the drug scenes are are intense and wonderful, and you know, wholly realistic. And uh, the characterizations of everybody, it's just wonderful. Um, and the quotes. I'm going to get into some quotes. Uh, in my opening thoughts and in my favorite moments. So just tell this. Um, okay, here's what, here's what uh, Renton says. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose a fucking big television. Choose washing machines, cars, compact displays and electrical center openers. Choose good health, low cholesterol, dental insurance. Choose fixed interest mortgage payments. Choose a starter home. Choose your friends. Choose leisure wear and matching luggage. Choose a three-piece suit on hire. Purchase in a range of public fucking fabrics. Choose DIY and wondering what the, who the fuck you are on Sunday morning who's sitting on that couch watching mind-numbing, spirit-crushing game shows. Stuffing fucking junk food into your mouth. Choose rotting away at the end of it all. Pissing your last in, in a miserable home. Nothing more than an embarrassment to the selfish fucked up rats you spawn to replace yourself. Choose your future, choose life. But why would I want to do a thing like that? I chose not to choose life. I chose something else. And the reasons, there are no reasons. Who needs reasons when you've got heroin? I mean, that's some damn good writing. That's that one. That's, that's, some, Welsh. <laughs> that's some amazing writing. Anyway, I got another one of those when, in, in our favorite moments. So yeah, our cast is brilliant. Um, direction is fantastic. Go Danny Boyle. Go Danny Boyle. And um, the and the writing was cataclysmic. It's mind blowing. Anyway, I really love this movie. Um, uh, I can, uh, I honestly could see no bad in it. And I dare you to try to make me see so bad. Thank you, <laughs> Lee. Thank you, Susan. I'm sure I can make you see some bad in anything. Well, here's here here it is. Um, over to Ethan. <laughs> what you muted, Ethan? No, I'm not muted. <laughs> oh, how very dare you! I know. I suppose I could get away with this. Nick couldn't leave here till we find out what could do it. <laughs> Honestly, um, yeah, as, as I said you? before this, uh, could he shut up? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I absolutely love this film. Like what Connor said, um, it's, it's such a 90s movie. I get such a nostalgic feel every time I watch this. It's a movie that hasn't even dated the diver. You know, when it came out, it was a pretty modern movie. But you can now watch this, and it hasn't dated because you could just watch it and go, oh, it's, an, it's set in the 90s. It just has that vibe of the 90s nightclubs, dance music, uh, dance and trance music, taking drugs, whatever you want. It's such a great story as well. It's just so grounded and gritty. I mean, to me, this is how you do a dark, grounded, gritty comedy drama crime film. You know, it's it captures. I now obviously I'm born in Windsor, but I've lived up in Scotland for 20 years, no, 21 years now. And it captures everything perfectly because it's set in Edinburgh, but even bits of Glasgow, it just captures all the flats and all that stuff. And I've walked past old flats where you could tell they are 
taking whatever in there. It just captures that world, that realistic world. There's nothing fantasy about it except for going down a toilet, <laughs> a bottomless toilet, which is brilliant, or a nightmare scene with a baby, which is so iconic and terrifying. But it it has such a great cast. I mean, you've got, I, I keep forgetting how old this movie is when you see how young they are. Uh, I mean, you've got Ewan McGregor, obviously, Ewan Brenner, is it Ewan Bren Bremner? Sorry, Ewan Bremner as Spud, Johnny Lee Miller as Sick Boy, and Kelly McDonald, who, wow, super young in this. And obviously the great Robert Carlyle, who just seems to be really good at playing psychos, doesn't he? But he's so great in this film. Um, he's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I've seen so many Begbies up here in Glasgow or Edinburgh. It, for someone who lives in Scotland, it's just so real. And you could say, I've seen people like that down the pub up here in Scotland. And it's hilarious because they're all the bloody same. <laughs> ready for a fight like i am going to get you a man but it's brilliant it and it like, like we've said it's just it's a simple story about these well one particular guy wanted to get off drugs and their lives up in scotland until things start to take a turnaround after renton meets diane who <laughs> risky scene is underage but you got, you always had moments like that, no matter what era it was. So after that, that's when things took a turnaround where he's taking more drugs and it, he has a relapse, which he wants to turn his life around. But of course, it's not that simple. He goes to London and he's followed by the lot of them, isn't he? <laughs> he was Spud and uh, Sick Boy and Begsby, Begsby, who's bloody hilarious, who's on the run. Um, and you do have so many actors in this, like um, Peter Mullen, I think that's his name, Peter Mullen, who's a Scottish director and actor. Uh, he was the dealer. Well, he, sort of the guy who cooks up the heroin for them. He wore like the leather waistcoat. And he Mother was Superior. Always, Mother Superior. That's it, Mother Superior, yeah. And he's a big Scottish actor and director now. Uh, the last thing I think I saw him in was Westworld, the TV show. Uh, so he's done a lot. And you've got Irvin Welsh, who gives rent to the suppositories, who makes a little cameo in it. Uh, you've got, as we said, Cosmos in it. He's brilliant. And there's so many actors. It just depicts the 90s so perfectly. And it's a film, I can watch this again and again. The sequel they did was good, but for me, it's just this film. It's just such a brilliant film with a brilliant start, a brilliant middle, and a brilliant ending. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to think, because I think it's, it's all filmed in Edinburgh, but the one scene that was filmed in Glasgow was the bit in the bar near the start, which introduces Begsby, who's telling the story about being all tough and all that with the pool cue, and he chucks the glass over, smashing the poor girl's skull in. Um, that was filmed, I can't remember what pub it is, but it, that was in Glasgow. I mean, that, that, those are the two iconic scenes for me. I always think of the, the baby, but the number one bit is the introduction of Begsby, where there's so many Scotsmen who make up a story. And then you always get that one Scotsman who jumps in later and says, oh no, this is the real story, man. And I'll tell you that what really happened. And it's hilarious. But yeah, and it has some dark, very dark moments, actually. Seriously dark moments that are pretty real and have happened, like with the baby or just taking too many drugs. But yeah, it's a great grounded, very dark, gritty movie. And I like that kind of stuff. I like how realistic it is. And as Connor said, if Hollywood touched this, it would be fantasized and really, it wouldn't feel real. Whereas this is real. It's very real. So yeah, those are my only thoughts. It's a great movie I could watch again and again. And it is probably my favorite of Danny Boyles and my favorite story by Urban Welsh. So over to you guys. Oh, um... Yeah, it's a 
yeah, it's a cult movie, and it, it it sort of propelled, as we say, McGregor, um, Danny Boyle into the realm of stardom, and you know, getting them bigger roles. Um, it it uh, Beg the Beg character of Begbie, um, Robert Carlyle went against the casting for that character because in the novel. Is the characterization of Begbie is nothing like Robert Carlyle. Um, Danny Boyle was going to give it to Christopher Eccleston because mm. uh, he'd used him in Shallow Grave the be year before, and he saw Christopher Eccleston suiting the characterization of Begbie physically more than um, Robert Carlyle, but Robert Carlyle got it in the end, um, which, thank God, he did. Because <laughs> you know, because he can't do anything wrong, can Robert Carlyle? Um, you and Bremner, who plays Spud, I mean, unbelievably, was playing Renton in the stage play of this. Um, but as I say, you and McGregor got the part yeah. for the movie. Yeah. So, and I believe. Sorry, just quickly. I believe in the stage play as well. I could be wrong. I think it's this one. A very young Michelle Gomez was in it as well. With Spud. Well, Google it, everybody. See if it's true. Um, <laughs> but also, I mean, I've heard that Johnny Lee, I think Johnny Lee Miller got the part of Sick Boy because of how good his impersonation of Sean Connery was. <laughs> How to impress Danny Boyle? I don't know. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's, it's gritty, it, it's down to earth, it's very, very dark. Um, but the usage of music in this is so well done and well used. Um, I think many movies after this took that sort of way of filmmaking using. Um, music to depict certain scenes in movies because before that yeah you had the, you had music you had songs but this was you know putting music forefront with imagery like the in this movie of drug taking and i mean for example you know, uh, lou reed perfect day to you to use that song for the the scenes of Renton's overdose, you know, and you know his his trip to the hospital and stuff like that was. Um, you would never see that coming, would you? <laughs> a song like that and to, with that sort of scene, um, <coughs> but it goes so well together. <laughs> it, it just gelled so well. Um, so, let's see. Favorite moments or things? What are a bit. Susan, over to you. All right. Well, first, my my favorite my, my first favorite moment the first time I ever saw this was was the toilet scene. Mm. I thought that was amazing, and I thought it was amazing that him crawling up his own bottom to to put in the the suppositories. I thought that that was really funny. And I laughed and I laughed. It really was just amazing. And uh, then um, <clears throat> and this uh, and the way Ewan McGregor s starts to light up the screen, he could tell where he was going in his life. I, I mean, he's just sparkly in this. And it's so it's so great. And then uh, Robert Carlyle, in many uh, interviews since the, the the this movie came out, and before uh, Train Spotting Two came out, was uh, has said that he really wanted to portray uh, Begbie as gay. Um, so. Um, 
he he had that in mind when he was when he was playing him. And but, so, but then, yeah, but then, but then he kicked off when he was in the car with with that woman. He she. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't know, but that's the way he yeah, said. Yeah. Um, maybe he was just. Uh, <clears throat> You know, early in life, he was thinking Begumi was was phobic, and then he moved into homophobic, and then moved into his own sexuality later. I don't know, but um, yeah. So he he made him a complex character, and even though he's really just like a tough guy, and so. Another one of my favorite scenes is where uh, where Renton is leaving all of the all the people behind um, and has stolen the money and is just going off to make a good life for himself. I mean, it's like the second time we've seen this. Like we saw it with Fargo. Mm-hmm. And Fargo went really bad, but in this case, it went pretty decent for him. And um, let's see. Um, They're off on the they're off on the the Scottish Highlands looking at mountains and stuff and said, Doesn't it make you proud to be Scottish? Tommy said. And Renton said, It's shite being Scottish. We're the lowest of the low. The scum of the fucking earth, the most wretched, miserable, servile, pathetic trash that was ever shot into civilization. Some hate Engl- the English. I don't, they're just wankers. We, on the other hand, we are colonized by wankers. Can't even find a different cult, decent culture to be colonized by. We're ruled by feet assholes. It's a shite state of affairs to be in. Tommy and all the fresh air in the world won't make any fucking difference. <laughs> I thought that that was just, you know, when I first heard that line in, in university, in uni, I was like, That's us. That's us where we are. We were in the hinterlands of Montana. <laughs> that was it. And um, yeah, I, I really love the I, I love the writing of this this piece. And um, and the the combination of Robert Carlyle and John, Johnny Lee Miller is brilliant. They were in. Plunkett and McLean together, and that was, uh, you know, they did so fun. That was so fun. And then, uh, and then, uh, in this, Co- uh, Cosmo is, is also in this as uh, Rent Boy's father. And I just love him too. He's been a lot with. Robert Carlyle and you know he's just an amazing actor himself and so yeah those are my favorite moments and I'm just, I'm sorry if I if I stole anybody else's but um that's the <laughs> no, way it goes when you're dealing drugs with strangers anyway here you go we, we usually leave that to Ethan to steal everybody's moments um that's why we're going to corner I like the uh, the ending where um, Renboy chooses life and walks off. Meanwhile, Begsby is um, trashing a hotel room, <laughs> and uh, the the good old Bobbies of the day. Um, you don't see them about much anymore. Looking like that, um, they're straight in that trying to um, trying to apprehend him. Um, that's a great scene, and that that's that's the scene where um, Bond Slippy plays, isn't it? 
um, as well. So it, yeah, that's just I, I think that that's um, that's also quite a well known scene because I remember before I ever saw Train Spotting, I'd seen the baby scene and I'd seen him walking over um, London Bridge as well, um, as well. That I think they're the two scenes that kind of um, really stand out for most people. Um, I would like to know if Danny Boyle and um, John Hodge, who wrote the script, kind of took any inspiration from A Clockwork Orange um, with this, because there's something very A Clockwork Orange about train spotting. I think it would be a modern. Yeah, it was, it was after, so of course it, it, it must have been influenced by it. Yeah, um, I, I think that train spotting is the closest thing we've ever had to a modern um, Clockwork Orange. Because um, there's something very Alex about, um, about Rent Boy. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the baby scene is, is fantastic. And... Um, and as Ethan mentioned, um, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and then he, and then he, <laughs> he kicks him in the balls. The, <laughs> too funny. Just too funny. That is amazing. Um, and also coming off the back of um, kind of the whole thing recently with It's a Sin and the discussion around AIDS and HIV. Um, I think a lot of people forget that this film kind of touched on that as well because obviously Tommy the footballer ends up dying of of HIV AIDS related um complications and um you know there's a whole thing around the funeral there as well so it's um it's very topical 90s film and it, it really kind of goes into poverty and um and depravity as well and to be honest um you know i i'm one of these people that think that you know scotland have been talking about independence for so many years um and i'm just sort of one of them people that think well if they're talking just do it you know vote for it hold a referendum um again um but to be honest uh, as susan mentioned that entire speech about how the kind of the lowest of the low. I, I think in terms of um, the British Isles, that the United Kingdom, they very much are. That, that there's there's a lot of truth to that in the way that they're viewed, because it, obviously England is always viewed as superior. Um, too right. Too right. Too right. Yeah, but I, I I do think that Scotland gets a lot of kind of stick in that where where they do appear to be the lesser the lesser nation of, of the of the uh, union so I, I think mm. it just the way it brings in all these topics um is fantastic to be honest um it's just a a really british 90s 90s film there's nothing much you can can really say about it other than that and um I, I do think it is a modern, a modern day, um, Clockwork Orange. Um, you know, it's just it, it's um, a bit like Fight Club, where it's just really dirty and gritty, and um, you know, it kind of the the, the characters aren't likable. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that they're supposed to be likable, but you. You can't help but feel like Rent Boy, like the re the reason why he's on drugs is because of the the socioeconomic background he comes from, being Scotland, and like the depravity at the time. Like they don't they weren't writing fun druggy characters back then. They were writing layer cake. They were writing yeah. Um, I mean there wasn't there wasn't a sort of a a hip hippie sort of thing happening with drugs back then. It was all like blackout and other, uh, I mean, really tough stuff anyway. Yeah, you, you see 
you see and almost sympathise with why he's in the situation he's in and why he chooses drugs over life and then at the end decides to choose life um, because it's just the situation that they live in is is pretty grim, to be honest. Um, and, it, you know, this film came out the year I was born, so I can't talk much about how it must have been at the time. But I can imagine that there might have been a certain amount of truth to... Um, I feel like it was almost maybe a way of telling real-life stories through these characters um, for the Scots. Because I know that drugs was very, very big in, in Scotland at the time. Um, and that's why Irving Welsh wrote Train Spotting in the first place. Literally everywhere. Yeah, literally everywhere. Uh, I mean, uh, here where I grew up, where I moved to in California, London, Scotland, you know, Greece, Ibiza, Spain, just everywhere, ubiquitous. But yeah, I, I think that there's um, that they're my favorite moments because they're so iconic and um, they, they really stand out. I don't think I'll ever forget the baby scene. You know, I could, I could see not watch the film now for another ten years, and when it comes to the baby scene, I'll always remember how it plays out because it just it sticks in your mind. It really is like a nightmare where a nightmare kind of sticks with you. Uh, I feel in many ways that the whole of Train Spotting, to be honest, plays out a bit like that. Um, I was going to say something else as well. Um, it'd be 25 years old this year as well, because it came out in, in 1996. Um, so happy birthday, happy anniversary to Train Spotting. I believe that there's a third book, so I wonder if they'll ever adapt that, but... Um, it would be nice to uh, revisit these characters one last time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I haven't read the books. I mean, um, I, I mean, I don't know how uh, Transporting Two is like Plano. I don't know if that's anything like the book. Because you know, if nobody knows yeah. Plano, we oh. see what's Transporting in in the book. Um, so yeah. I don't know if uh... and there is a third one mm -hmm. there is a third one but it's about Begbie Ooh. Mm -hmm. that'll be interesting if they um... adapt that that could be quite an interesting one actually it would be cool I think uh, Danny Boyle has expressed interest in doing a third one but I'm wondering if he might kind of like because like you said if it's focused on Begsby. Maybe he'll um, he'll kind of rework it to where it mm. suits them all. Yeah, you never know. Um, going back to what Connor said, um, Danny Boyle has said um, the character of Renton, Renton Boy, um, he wanted a mixture of Michael Caine in Alfie and Michael McDowell's character in A Clockwork Orange. Oh, okay. So maybe that's where the feel you're getting from getting that feel from from the Renton's character. Yeah, I, f I feel like yeah, yeah. It's it, the the Clockwork Orange thing that I kind of recognised with it. it. Did mainly come through Rent Boy, but also I just think that the whole kind of the society that it's trying to tell the story within is very similar to a Clockwork Orange as well. But I know that a Clockwork Orange is probably slightly more surreal than than mm. train spot and this takes it the completely other way where it's just realistic really mm -hmm. there you go you see i'm full of useful information um <laughs> are you <laughs> yes and now, and now we're going over to someone who was full of useless information um no i'm only kidding you know <laughs> i'm only kidding don't you uh Ethan, oh, to you. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I mean, the, the number one, I, it's been mentioned, the number, my number one favourite scene is always the introduction of Beg, Begbie. I mean, we get him in that one little tiny bit at the start, but to me, the introduction is him in a bar. True, true to some of the Scots up here, like you 
always get someone who's like Begbie telling that story. And then, of course, dear Tommy pops in later and says, eh, it's not really that, that's not really what happened. <laughs> he was off his head <laughs> and hung over as hell. Um, it, that's a classic scene. Um, trying to think, uh, it has so many speeches as well, like the opening speech and the ending speech and the speech when they're in the countryside saying how they're the lowest of the low. It, as Connor said, there is truth to that because I have mates up here who went through all of that and like during the 90s and stuff. I mean, they're all in their late 40s and early 50s now as, as the characters would be. Uh, so they have, it, it, there is truth to that. It really depicts some really good truths. Um, oh, actually, fun fact, while I remember it, uh, the baby that is in the picture there on Susan's background, being held by Ewan McGregor, I've met her all grown up last year. Which one? The one Ewan McGregor's holding. Yeah, but there was two. And they were twins. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So which one did you meet? I can't <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember her name, but I met her last year. So it was through a friend of mine. Lauren. Um, Lauren. I think it's Lauren, yeah. But I, I mean, it was just like very brief. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's her. Did she just look like, okay? hello? Did she look okay? Yeah, she was okay and alive and not crawling on the fucking ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> or falling down to your face. Oh! <laughs> but um, um, one uh, one scene that hasn't been pointed out, which I got to mention, which is just so funny, is when it's a great big bit, and it goes on for about five minutes, where Renton finally moves down to London, and you get the shots of London, and it's so nineties. I mean, the way it looks and how people dress, it takes me back to when I was living in Windsor at the time going into London, it's great. And the music they play for that scene is great. And then you've got Renton doing his job, being all happy, doing all right. He's got away from it all. And then he gets a letter from what sounds like Diane and it's read in, read by Kelly MacDonald until he gets to the very end. And he's thinking, oh, it's Diane. Until he gets to the end, who it's signed by. See you soon, Begbie. <laughs> And Begbie's right at the door at that minute. Ding dong. And he's like, oh, no. And it, I love that scene. That's the other scene. That, when it just cuts to him going, um, robbery with a replica, with a fucking replica, man. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck can we armed robbery with a replica? And it's just so bloody funny. Just <laughs> Brenton's sitting there and he's just like, listening, just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. But in his head, like, why the hell is he here? Why me? Why did it have to be you of all my mates? And, you know, stealing the silver. And you just get all the scenes, like, kicking the pot noodle, and he throws the frying pan or whatever it is, asking Renton to put a bet on and stuff like that, get cigarettes. He says, like, go down and get me some cigarettes. Why don't you get them? Well, since I'm in the hiding, I can't get them. <laughs> It's it's such a brilliant scene. That that is so good, so so funny, it's so well written. It's just hilarious how they play off each other, and I quite like. And of course, it gets worse when Spud pops in, and they're all sitting there, and you can all eat fish and chips. And it cuts to beg me eating fish and chips. Spud, okay, and you see Renters looking really peeved off about something. He's like, I can't believe you did that. I got it for a good price, man. It was my fucking telly. <laughs> you mean sick boy, not spud? Oh, sick boy, yeah, sick boy. Sorry, sick boy appears and he's like sells the telly, and he's like, "Oh, if I knew you were gonna get so and so, I wouldn't have done it." <laughs> and they're just sitting there with these chips with no telly on the table. <laughs> I mean, that entire scene for five seven minutes is absolutely hilarious you know you it's it has a perfect balance of like funny dramatic terrifying and then it gets like sort of light-hearted funny really it's just really funny 
Um, and I quite like, I do quite like to see with uh, Sick Boy's plan, after they've been to Tommy's funeral, where Sick Boy's plan is to um, get all that money. And there's all four of them planning out what to do and stuff like that. I, I, I always seem to quite like that, see, where it's just the four of them, these four main characters playing out this big, big crime, what they deem the crime of the century, because they've never done it before, something this big. But that, that's a really good scene. Um, trying to think. I mean, it, it, and it does, like you said, there's so many quotes. Uh, I mean, uh, of course, uh, another funny bit. Uh, Begby thinking he's pulled, but it's not. <laughs> thinking he's like, oh, he scored big time. I've won the bet. I've got a woman. Are you sure it's a woman? <laughs> you don't know. It might have been good. <laughs> yeah, that, I know. That, that bit just kills me. He's just sitting there dramatized. Well, I'm not a poofter. <laughs> I mean, that's so 90s when he says that. I haven't heard that in years. I'm not a puffer. I mean, you couldn't say that now, but, you know, because it's so, but it, it's just so funny. That bit was good. Um, we've said the ending. And as, as we said, Renton, you, you know, you do have sympathy for the character. You know, you do feel for him because it was economically depressed mm. in Edinburgh at the time. And one liked, and I love him in the second film as well, is Spud. And you feel for him as well. As the film progresses, you really start to feel for him as well. And as Renton says, I don't care about Sick Boy or Begbie, but Spud, he never hurt anyone. And he's not really that bad. And I love it, just that one scene at the end where, you know, you've got this great shot of London, which is nostalgic to me, but I do love the little bit with Spud. He leaves that money for him. It's just such a sweet moment. He just thinks, yeah, gives him a note, check this locker and Spud opens it and there's money for him. So the two sort of bad guys, Sick Boy and Begby, they get their just desserts. But Spud, he's like, you weren't really that bad try something different and it's a nice lovely scene and it sort of sets up bits of the second film where spud is one of the sweetest characters ever in that film and you really feel big time for him in the second one where you, you get the flashbacks of when they were younger it's brilliant it, um I think that might be it, actually. Um, oh, no, of course, nobody's met. Well, I'll leave it that. Actually, I'll leave it at that. I was going to say a few more, but I think I'll leave it at that. But there was one thing I was going to mention. But I think Lee might want to mention this one. Because he mentioned it before the cast. Did I? All oh, right. OK. So um, but those are my favourite moments. Those are my favourites. Uh, over to you, Lee. What are right. you I'm going to lower it now into the gutter, am I? I'm sure I've left, I've left you loads of bits. I'm going to lower the turn way into the gutter, toilet humour, and about um, excrement in the bed sheets. Is that what you're on about? Poor Spud. Poor, poor <laughs> Spud. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that is... I mean, you, you, you think it's bad where he wakes up after a night out and you don't know where he is and the sheets are just soiled. Um, but then it gets even worse, doesn't it, when he, the, her parents uh, just, just get covered in it when she pulls the sheet off him and, oh, God. And do you notice who that actress was? The, the, his girlfriend? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's Anderson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Morning Myrtle. Morning yeah. Myrtle. <laughs> yeah. Shirley Henderson, who was in who was in Hamish Macbeth with with Robert Carlyle as well. She's been in a lot of stuff with Robert. Um, 
one scene what nobody has mentioned, which I just wet myself with laughing. Um, it's it's not funny, but it's you feel for Tommy when he's making out with his girlfriend, and then they want to watch <laughs> each other, and Renton's nicked the videotape of them both, both having sex, and. <laughs> He's all over the place trying to find the video. She's panicking like I must have took it back to the <laughs> to the video shop. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but then, you, then the next scene you see there's there's Rent and Sick Boy watching the video. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just I just like the way it's all set up. This movie, it's as you say, it, of its time. It, there was nothing like it, I don't think. They pushed the boundaries with this movie. Um, you know, the drug taking. They didn't. You know, they didn't really cover anything up. They didn't hide it. They just. It was warts and all with this movie, mm. and and that's what I like about this. You know, it, even even down to the um, um, Renton finding about uh, you know having underage sex. Um, and then her turning around, sort of blackmailing him, you know. And it happens. It, it, this is that is true life. It happens. Um, you go, you go into any well, not at the moment because things are closed down. But if you went into any nightclub or any any bar these days, you see a nice young woman or whatever like that. You find out she's about twenty years younger than you, and she's still at school. But it's all the makeup, isn't it? It's all the, and that's what happened to Renton in this. You know, met her in the club. She. But she te- she turns out to be okay because she said in the in the sequel we uh, we may get to the sequel at some point. Um, once you once you hit once you hit about fifty, it's best to pull people with gray hair. You're you're at least fucking safe then. Well, but my my issue with that kind of part of the storyline is that Kelly McDonald looks about thirteen, so I don't understand where kind of the because especially when she's in like no. school uni- when she's in a school uniform, she doesn't wear any makeup or anything. So you can kind of tell that she's 13. But I think that even kind of in the club scene, she she looks 13. She doesn't look very old at all. No, she looks to me, she looks about maybe 20 in the club. Uh, it's amazing what makeup what it, makeup and a shiny dress can do. No, you, and yeah, of course, you, the world. She, she would have been about. I think she would have been about twenty when she filmed this. Yeah, but it, she was playing a, a school kid in in the movie, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. Ke- Kelly was thirteen when she filmed it. She didn't. No, it. She, she didn't the other day. No, I don't think they'll have allowed. No, no. She, I've just looked it up. Kelly McDonald was born in nineteen seventy six. So oh, right. okay, yeah. So yeah. twenty. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have allowed her to do um, a sex scene at thirteen. Oh, yeah, of course. She's playing a thirteen-year-old, though, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. She's playing yeah. a thirteen-year-old, which you know you got twenty-year-olds who do look really young. So they managed to get the costume. And this, she did look young. And this, and this was the, and this was the day and age of uh, Ewan McGregor getting his kids off in every movie he was in. Um, <laughs> Apart which, from this one as well. Yeah. Except for two years later, Pat, Phantom Pat Star Wars. He didn't do it. Yeah, start part yeah. from Star Wars, which was about two, yeah. three years if later. He'd got his kit off. Phantom, if he'd have got his kit off in the Phantom Minute, he might have pulled he'd get his kit off like in Darth Maul. The thing is, in all of his movies, that that mm. you know, yes, he was getting his kit off, but he was also going swimming in all of his movies for a really long time. Good job he can swim, isn't it? Well, um, he was going through depression at the time, though, apparently, because he said when he was filming the Star Wars films, he wasn't in a very good place. Never was we when we were watching it. No, that's uh, not true. That is true. So it must have been around this time. He must have been... Um, it must have been going through some... Some tough personal stuff, to be honest. Yeah, um, he's done well. He's done really well. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the, also, was, we mentioned Keith Allen earlier. Him playing the 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 
dealer at the end of the movie, you know, buying the drugs. Danny Boyle has sort of hinted or sort of, you know, slightly hinted that that's the same character in Shallow Grave. Oh. Ah. It sort of implied that was him in Shallow Grave. So I don't know how true or but that's what I've read somewhere that Danny Boyle did say something on them lines. So, I am quite surprised Eccleston wasn't in this film. It, well, in just a minor role, to be honest. Yeah, Eccleston was due to do Begbie, but um, it was uh, Robert Carlyle's um, mm. call for it instead. But there I'm we go. I'm so glad that they chose Robert Carlyle. <laughs> I'm really, really forever grateful that they chose Robert Carlyle. I've been, I've been a fan of his all along, and he's just, he's just, you know, he's a cinnamon roll. He's too sweet to survive, you know. And also, as well, this this movie, um, what is sort of st restarted Iggy Pop's career. Oh yeah, I was mean to say that one as well. Um, Lust for Life and uh, the other song that's using it, Night Clubbing. Yeah, um, two great songs. Two. Yeah, great songs. Um, yeah. Before before that, I mean, he was a, he was a legend in his own right before that. But once them songs was used in this um, radio play and everything like that, got that song back into the charts around about the same time as the movie was out, and just re reinvigorated his sort of career. Um, Did um, Born Slippy? Make it into the charts. <laughs> got, got to belt number two. Oh, okay. Um, it was a big but, Yeah, this this video cassette has the the lust for life um, music video as the. And the, I want to the know, end of it. What does have you have you ever heard it in your ear before? I mean, have what? Iggy Pop lyric for the lust for life. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever had it in your ear before? Um, only with a condom. I don't know what. <laughs> and it's just like hypnotizing chickens. <laughs> I'm just quoting some of the lines from the song. Yeah, because <laughs> it's lust for life. <laughs> but. Anyways, anything else we'd like to say about trend spotting before we move on? No? no. Okay then. Final sin score. Ethan. Oh. Yes, you. Well, it's well, it's one of the best movies ever. It's a iconic, perfect British movie. I think you know one of the best British movies ever. So, you know, it's, oh, I'm trying to think of something because we always pick a certain thing like this out of this or whatever. So, you don't have to. Mm. Mm. If you don't, 10, you'll be right. Okay, okay, I know. For this film, it's so perfect. 10 out of 10 flying beer glasses by Begbie. So that's poor ten Let's girls getting hit. That's poor ten girls or men getting hit by a glass. <laughs> or, 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 or an American tourist at the um, Edinburgh Festival. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, that's a great bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So ten out of ten. Yeah. Um, fantastic movie. Okay, uh, over to you, Connor. Um, I choose eight out of ten. See what he I did there? his life. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, eight out of yeah. ten. Choose. I'll, I'll make a note of that. Connor did something good. <sighs> For a change. Uh, <laughs> over to Susan. Now I've justified this to myself all sorts of ways. It wasn't a big deal. Just a minor betrayal. Or we'd outgrown each other, you know, that sort of thing. But let's face it, I ripped them off, my so-called mm -hmm. mates. But beg me, I couldn't give a shit about. And sick boy, well, he'd done the same to me. He'd have done the same to me if he'd only thought of it first. And Spud, well, okay, I felt sorry for Spud. He never hurt anybody. So why did I do it? 
that could offer a million answers, all false. The truth is I'm a bad person. That's gonna change. This is the last of that sort of thing. I, now I'm cleaning up and moving on, going straight and choosing life. I'm looking forward to, to it already. I'm gonna be just like you, the job, the big family, the fucking big television, the washing machine, the car, the compact disc, an electric tin opener, good health, low cholesterol, dental insurance, mortgage, starter home, leisure wear, luggage, three piece suite, DIY, game shows, junk food, children, walks in the park, nine to five, good at golf, watch, washing the car, choice of sweaters, family Christmas, index pension, tax exemption, cleaning gutters, getting by, looking ahead, the day you die. She didn't okay. like it. <laughs> I'll, give it no. I'll give it 10 uh, heroin suppositories out of 10. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, well, it's, it's, it is gritty. It's, it's very groundbreaking. Um, iconic. So for that reason, it gets 10. Lager, 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 lager out of 10. See what I did there? Yeah. You. Very good. On Slippy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that is our little review of a little known movie called Transporting by a little known director called Danny Boyle. I don't think he'll come to much myself, but there you go. Um, I'd like to thank Ethan, Susan and Connor for talking all dr things drugs because um, some of us know more about it than most don't we Connor? Uh, we, we actually have Danny Boyle to thank for uh, <laughs> the Knives Out because here we go, here we go come on if, 60, uh, how many degrees of separation are we going now? So, so ni Knives Out the, the, um, the, the who done it film with Daniel Craig that was a huge success um, that's now getting a sequel um, if Danny Boyle's Bond film happened Daniel mm -hmm. Craig wouldn't have played the main character in Knives Out and I don't think Knives Out would have happened if uh, Daniel Craig didn't play Benoit Blanc so we have Danny Boyle to thank for Somehow getting fired from James Bond um, to allow such a fantastic film as Knives Out to happen. And uh, thanks, thanks everybody for staying through our uh, guys who played Obi Wan Kenobi podcast. We did this with Alec Guinness in the first one with uh, Bridge on the River Kwai, and we did. Ian McGregor here um, as Rent Boy. And so this is guys that played the Obi Wan Kenobi. Hello there. The connections there everywhere. Is. There is. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. Um, General yeah. Kenobi. <laughs> so, yeah, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you already don't. Um, please press the notification button and you'll, you'll get a little bell ring every time. That's Ethan and his little dinger again. Well, we know we know, he, we know you McGregor chose money because he's coming back as Obi Wan Kenobi, so he clearly got a yeah. massive paycheck and chose that. So he, he didn't really choose life; he just chose money. No, but he played he played Obi Wan Kenobi through the Clone Wars series, through the um, through the Rebels series. He's he's been in a, in a yeah, lot. Yeah. Well, that's what Renton did, did he? He got the money, decided to change his name, and went off to become Kenobi. So now we know what happens to Renton. Hey, he became a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> so he got cleaned up after all and chose a really good life. Oh, We're just going off in the you know. He met Liam Neeson in London and it all went pear-shaped from there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going uh, to... Uh, he lived happily on a desert planet. Well done, <laughs> Renton. <laughs> and then he built a bridge in, 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 in Japan. Oh, oh, oh. Bridge of Japan? Oh, yeah, of course. 
River, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Anyways, he's done a lot. He chose life. What was I saying? Where was I? Uh, you. It was a bit after I rang the bell. Notifications. Yeah. <laughs> was, I, was I going off to score? Because I feel like I'm going to do. Don't get dodgy gear. Whatever you do, don't get dodgy gear. <laughs> There's nothing but dodgy gear in Hull. <laughs> There's nothing but dodgy gear on Geeks Assembled. Um, That's terrible. Um, you, you don't want to see my dodgy gear. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't have a coke nail. I don't. I don't have a coke nail. So, yeah, no tracks, no coke nail. Susan, we know where your coke nail is. It's on your left foot. I believe it's referred to as skunk. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yes. Oh, I guess please, a bit of that. please subscribe to us because. <laughs> It's sending me around the bend. Um, ah. <laughs> uh, please, you know, we're on Facebook, Twitter, you, uh, all over the place. And if you want to be on, leave us a message and we can kick one of these guys off and we'll have you instead. How's that? Does that sound fair enough? But then it'll just be you. Are you right? <laughs> it'll, it'll, be, it'll be just you, Alid, and them. And when, how long is it since Alid's been on a cast? I feel like if one of us got kicked off, he'd make a return, though. <laughs> it's been over a year. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't town fly when you're having fun. It does. <laughs> so I think that's it. Now, we're all going to go go off, and um, I don't know what we're going to do. What are you going to do, Ethan, when you go off from finishing this cast? Well, I'm not going to do drugs. I thought you were going to say we're all going to go off and do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather get pissed down the pub, but we can't do that right now because certain things are still iffy. Right. Okay. So, so but, Ethan, but, but, but like Renton, I'm going to plan to make a wee trip down to London. What? Well, you, you're going to con all your mates out of money? <laughs> <laughs> I think Susan's going to do a bit of shopping or shoplifting. I don't know which one. Is it? And I'm um, Connor. Well, I'm watching Eurovision. You sad man. Oh, I just. <laughs> yes. Well, my dad just messaged me and he said, "Ethan, you should watch this. There's some right nutters on here. It's hilarious." <laughs> <laughs> it was a toss-up between heroin and Eurovision. I'd choose heroin. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And on, and on that bombshell, I think we should say goodbye. Until next time, be safe. Oh, and one last thing, choose life. Oh, yeah.